if you think about um, how property works in terms of international migrations, we talk about launchpad suburbs quite mm-hmm. often. The idea is if you are an international migrant, you don't know Australia. You don't know Sydney. All you have is the address of your uh, of your job, of your university. So you move close to that location. And then after a couple of years, you've spoken to many of your friends and colleagues. You looked at enough real estate websites and you slowly understand how the city works. Eventually, your housing behavior ends up looking like the housing behavior of anyone else. So that means that in times of high migration intake, These launchpad suburbs, which are near the job clusters and near the uni clusters, are absolutely booming. And they're providing the housing, the one and two bedroom apartments that those new arrivals need. At the moment, and for the next two, three years, these launchpad suburbs will be massively hit. And you will not have a good time if you own property in those areas, simply because there's no demand for this at the moment. But if I'm uh, not completely wrong with my assumption that Australia will, in a post-corona world, be seen as a safe refuge, just a livable and safe place to invest your time, energy and money in, then migrants will come and those launchpad suburbs will fill up again. In the meantime, the launchpad suburbs are struggling because the people that are currently living in the launchpad suburbs are the millennials. And the millennials the biggest procrastinators to ever have uh, walked this continent, invented the gap year, dated university for longer, started work later, started partnering up later, started having kids later, started buying homes later. All of this is now happening. Millennials are finally having kids and now they need three to four bedroom homes because they have kids, because they need a Zoom room to work from home occasionally. So that means the big millennial population cohort, a big, big generation, is moving to the suburbs where the three and four bedrooms are available. They're emptying those launchpad suburbs, those inner city suburbs. And so those will struggle because the next generation to move into those suburbs, Gen Z, it's a smaller generation anyways. So there would have always been a gap, but now the smaller generation isn't so keen to move close to the university if the university only offers online. So you stay home with mom and dad for a little longer. We see how the regions, the outer suburbs where the big houses are available become more attractive in the short term and the CBD becomes less attractive in the short term. Once we go back to population growth, the CBD will continue to fill. Even if the CBD uh, loses many jobs to the suburbs, eventually it will fill up again. But it, you know, I'm, I'm just a data guy. I can easily say this because I don't have uh, billions of dollars invested into a tower in the city center. If I have billions of dollars invested into a city tower, this is a bit more dramatic than my narrative is at the moment. These are the guys that will really struggle to find a new way to sell the inner city as an attractive location for, for work. It will always be because lots of the work will, can be done there really well. But if all of a sudden, as a worker, I can live in a place that's just nicer, maybe I will do this and then just sacrifice my office time in order to have more family time. Mm -hmm.